welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be all about Shop My Stash. That is a monthly series that I do here on my channel where I use products for about a month. I will be going over and talking about my thoughts on each of them. And then afterwards, I'll be picking new products to use for the next month. So if that sounds good to you, if you like Shop My Stash videos, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. It just lets me know the kinds of videos you want to see. Make sure you subscribe and stick around. And with all that, let's just get started talking about all the products that I've been using for the last month. Okay, so I haven't filmed in about a week. I've been in a little bit of a funk, but I'm pulling myself out of that today. We're still gonna stay very casual with the sweatshirt, but let's just get started talking about these products. I'm gonna go in order of application, starting with primer. So I have two primers, and the first is the Tula Skincare Face Filter Blurring and Moisturizing Primer. So I did use this entire thing up. There's no more. I'm, uh, I'm not sure what the full size looks like, but this pump here is not doing it for me. However, this was okay. I liked that it was a moisturizing and blurring primer in one. I don't typically like moisturizing primers. I feel like it's just an additional step when I'm already applying moisturizer and sunscreen. My skin is moisturized enough already. If my skin was extra, extra dry, I could see wearing a moisturizing primer, but that's not my skin type. So I do prefer just a more blurring primer. And this was okay. Nothing I'm gonna repurchase or get the full size of, but I was happy to use it and it's gonna go immediately in my empties bin. And then the second primer I have is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. Everyone knows this, this primer. You can use it as a primer, as a highlighter, whatever you want. I actually did not use this one time in the past month. So I'm gonna roll this over into next month and use this primer along with another primer. And if I don't reach for it for another month, it's gonna get decluttered, but I'm not ready to declutter it just yet. I'm gonna just see if I reach for it, if I like it. I don't even remember what I think of this product. I just need to actually use it one time and gather my thoughts on it before I decide if I'm gonna declutter it or not. So for now, it's gonna stay, but stay tuned for next month on whether this is just gonna go or not. After primer, we have concealer. So I have a color corrector. This is the Benefit Boing. You've seen this in a lot of Shop My Stash videos. I'll link the playlist above, but I only have two color correctors, this one and the Becca. So I just swap between the two month by month. I'm getting, you know, there's some wear in there. You can really start to see a dip. I do prefer this one over the Becca, but I don't wanna necessarily declutter the Becca just yet. So I'm gonna give the Becca a few more rounds, I think, and then eventually this will be my only color corrector. But for now, we're gonna swap it out. The reason I just prefer this color corrector is that it's a little bit less emollient than the Becca and you need just so very little. You only need a little of the Becca as well, but it's just because it's not so emollient, it glides on better and it's just a little bit thicker. You get a little bit better coverage with the same amount. So if you're in the market for a color corrector, I do recommend this one over Becca. I know Becca is no longer, but I think that they transferred that product over to Smashbox. And then the second concealer is the Dior Backstage Concealer. I have the shade 2N. And you know, I really like this concealer. I did make quite a dip in it. You can kind of see the line here. This is a solid concealer. I do like the brush tip applicator. I am wearing this concealer today. I'm wearing most of these products today that I'm talking about, but everything is listed down in the description box below. This is a solid concealer. You'll see later once we go over my foundations and stuff, but this is a good all around concealer where if you're someone who only has one concealer in their makeup bag, this would be one that I would recommend because it goes great with light coverage foundations as well as full coverage foundations. It's a really great medium where I think that it plays well with a lot of different complexion products and it's very 
multifunctional, which is why I would recommend this for someone with a smaller collection. I just think it's great to use with everything. I do think this shade is maybe a little bit dark for me. Not dark, but it is my skin tone, so it doesn't do much highlighting. I really only use this under my eyes, and then if I want to highlight, I either need to use a powder. So this would be one that I would need to use more in the summer when I'm a little bit darker and it is more of a highlight shade on me, or I need to go a shade down. That's more of a me problem. However, I do really enjoy this concealer. I'm glad that I picked it up. And then now let's go to foundation. On to foundation, I again have two foundations here. The first is the Beauty Blender Bounce Skin Tint, and then I have the MAC Studio Water Weight SPF 30 foundation. I would say I didn't realize this until I used both of them, but these are basically identical foundations. The shades that I have are NC20 and then Light 4. I am wearing the MAC one today. Both of these are very lightweight on the skin, but also very buildable. So you can see the coverage that I have today, like for being a light coverage foundation, I think that I got solid medium coverage once I added powder and the rest of my makeup complexion products. I really enjoy both of these. It would be hard for me to pick which one I like more. I've had the MAC one more. This is actually the only MAC foundation that I've ever tried. And it's been a solid one that I've relied on for years and years. The Beauty Blender one is newer, so that's why I think I just tend to gravitate towards this one a little bit more. The only, only difference that I can really say between the two is the Beauty Blender is slightly more radiant than the MAC. The MAC is definitely more of a natural soft matte finish, whereas this one is a little bit more radiant. You're gonna wanna powder this down if you don't like glowy finishes, but other than that, they wear down the same, they give about the same coverage. I think these are great dupes for each other, but they're both pretty inexpensive. I think that this one's around $29, and I wanna say this one is two. The only con to both of these, as you can see, I mean, they look almost identical in the bottle, but this dropper, God, this is just my least favorite way for application ever. I hate it so much. You can see this one worked okay, but this MAC one, since I wore it today, like the dropper just almost doesn't work. Like see, even the black part is just like, really is just a finicky product with the dropper. I almost always just pour it out on my hand. I wish that companies didn't do this dropper method. I would rather just have a cap and lid and pour it on my hand than have this dropper, but highly recommend both of these foundations if you're looking for just a long lasting but light coverage foundation. Then next up we have powder. So this is the powder I used. This is the Dior Powder No Powder that everyone goes nuts about. If you saw my full face of Dior makeup, I'll link that video above. I did not like this powder on first impressions and that's why I pulled it into Shop My Stash. You can see that I've used it quite a bit. I've really tried to make this product work for me and I'm happy to say that I finally have. I figured out the secret combination to make this powder work because I was really upset that this seemed to be well loved by everyone except for me. This is a powder, again, I am wearing this today, that's what really just bumped up this foundation from a light to a medium coverage, which I love, that versatility. This powder though, in order to make it work for me, I have to use a sponge, that is the secret. Typically with powders, I take a very wispy brush, very wispy, I don't use a lot of powder, and I'll you know kind of go in and just like lightly set my makeup, that did not work for this powder. And the reason is because it's a more dense powder, it's very lightweight on the skin, but it's not a translucent powder. It's not the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush powder. So this powder needs to be pressed into the skin. If not, if you use a wispy brush like this, it's just gonna sit on top of your skin and emphasize your pores. So to really get that blurring effect, I take my makeup sponge here, I rub it into the powder, and then I really just press it into my skin, press it into my pores, and that gives me the blurring finish that everyone talks about. So if you're having trouble with this powder like I did, that's what I would recommend trying. 
I did have to today put tape on it to pull off the hard pan. That's the only downside to this. If you're gonna be using a sponge, you are gonna hit hard pan a little bit faster, but if you just put some tape on it, it goes away. I am just thrilled to now be able to use this powder and like it and not have to declutter it because I was really thinking that by the end of the month here, this was gonna be a powder I just kind of wasted my money on. And now that is not the case. So secret, if you haven't tried this with a sponge, I would try it with a sponge. And then let me know in the comments if that worked for you or if you know of another method to just have this powder also work. But using it with a wispy brush and just lightly brushing it over, that does not work. Let's now go over bronzer, blush, and highlight. This is gonna be really quick and easy because I only used one palette this month. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Nudegasm Face Palette. So this has everything you would want in a face palette. It has a contour, a bronzer, a blush, and a highlight. I also pulled this in this month because the first time I tried this, I had a lot of trouble with it, specifically with the bronzer shades. It just picked up so much and looked so muddy on my cheeks. It's probably one of my most hated videos that I put up because it was so bad. It just looked terrible. And I wanted to give this just more use and see if I could, again, make it work for me. I recently did a review on the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk palette that came out. And I just kind of wanted to compare the two because a lot of people really like this palette and I was on the fence still. So now that I've used this a little bit more, um, I still don't think that I like this as much as the Pillow Talk palette. Granted, the Pillow Talk palette only has blush and highlight. For some reason, I do like this palette, just I think what holds me back from liking it more than the Pillow Talk is the blush. I am not a glowy blush person, I think is what I've discovered about myself. I don't mind a blush if it has a sheen or if it's more of a satin finish, but this blush is almost like a straight up highlighter. I am, again, wearing this, but I mixed it with my Project Pan blush. I'll link my Project Pan above as well. So sometimes, you know, I don't just stick to shop my stash products. I have Project Pan. I will always reach into my makeup drawers if I just wanna pull something. I just try to give a little bit more attention to these. Just, yeah, I don't like this blush. The rest of these products are great. I will continue to use this and like this. And I might even depot the blush. I'm not sure. I'll probably keep it in, let's be honest. But I really, I just really don't like this blush. It's too highlighty for me. I'll use it as like a blush topper or even more of like a pinky highlight if I'm just skipping highlight altogether. But for me, that's not a blush shade at all. I wish that it had more of a satin finish and then this palette would trump probably most of my face palettes that I have because I love that it has a really cool tone contour in here and I love the bronzer shade. The highlight is beautiful, but the blush just knocks it down 25% and I'm only 75% in love with this palette. Still really great, just if you don't like those glowy, glowy blushes, this is not the palette for you. There's better ones out there. Now let's move on to eyeshadow. I have three eyeshadow products, so I have a palette and then I have two singles. Let's talk about the two singles first because I've talked about these quite a bit already. These are the Auric Smoke Reflex. I have Defiance and then I have Temper. I'm wearing Temper today. I always get both of these confused. I'm wearing the more bronzy one. I'm wearing Temper today. That's the more bronzy one. Defiance is the more rose gold. I love both of these. They're so easy to use. You just throw the cream on and then put the topper on top and you have the most gorgeous eye look ever. They're so simple. They're so easy for every day. I cannot recommend these highly enough. If you're looking for something quick and easy, these Oryx are just, they are everything. I love them. And then the eyeshadow palette I picked was the Tartlet in Bloom. This is one of the oldest palettes in my collection and I was always on the fence whether or not I should declutter this. I'll also link my declutter playlist above, but this was always in the maybes because it still smells fine and I wanted to see if it still performed okay. Happy to say that it does. I use this quite a bit and I re-fell in love with this palette. This is a great, great palette. Granted, it is fairly light. There's a little bit of depth here, 
but this is not going to be for anyone with medium or even darker skin tones. This is really for someone my skin tone or even lighter. So it's not a very inclusive palette. However, this is really just a great, great palette that kind of just got lost in the shuffle of eyeshadow palettes. Tarte really hasn't come out with products that I've been super interested in. I know they came out with like the Energy palette recently, which is supposed to be like a mix of this one and a different palette. I'm not sure how are, they just, they really did something with this one and I love it. It's the best everyday neutral palette for me. It has these great shimmers. This was highly talked about at one point for a reason, and I'm gonna keep this around because it still works great, it smells fine, and I need to get more use out of this because I just forgot how much of a staple this palette is. Now, before I go over my last category, which is lips, I wanted to do a quick update on this eyebrow gel. I normally don't do eyebrow products because I'll only pull one and then I'll use it until it's empty, so I don't really rotate my brow products that frequently. And a couple months ago, I pulled in this Kosas Airbrow. I had finished my M Cosmetics one, which was a great eyebrow gel. And I wanted to get some use out of this one because it was already open. I have the shade Soft Brown. And this is just way too dark for me. I wish it was a little bit lighter. I would think with Soft Brown it would be, but it is still very dark on me and I stopped using it altogether. I've really just been using my brow pencil because I hate my brows every time I put this on. So unfortunately, I am gonna declutter this because it just doesn't suit me. However, this is a nice product. I do really enjoy it. I like the formula. I just need a lighter shade of this. So we will be pulling in a new eyebrow gel this round. And then now let's go to lips, which is my last category. I only pulled in three this round because I didn't wanna overwhelm myself. This was kind of a smaller shot my stash. Sometimes I have really large ones. This time I kept it a little bit small. This round also going in, I will probably keep it a little bit smaller just because I also need to test out new products that I'm trying, do the ranking videos that I do for new products. So I need to make sure that I'm finding balance in things that I'm using from my collection and new products. But I only pulled three of these. I have the NARS Lip Balm in the original Orgasm and I am getting through this. I think this is like my most used lip product. Granted, it's kind of just like a glorified chapstick. This is how much I have left. I really wanna finish this up. I kinda want, I already have like a NARS product in Project Pan, but I think once I use up that NARS product, this will be the one that I put in Project Pan next. So I really love that. It's just a great tinted lip balm. I mean, there's nothing else to say about it. I really enjoy it. I like the color. It's very moisturizing. It's something that you can just throw on to have a little bit of color, but your lips still feel really hydrated. And then these other two are just minis. These are the Lawless Forget the Filler. And I love both of these. I want to say that they're both about halfway done. Not saying much because again, they're just like the small size. I can't see how much product is in here. 1.7 ml. Very small, but these are great as well. I would consider buying a full size of this. I like it a lot. If I was to get a full size, I'd probably just get the clear. I wouldn't say between like the different tints that I noticed that much of a difference. I think I'm wearing this one today. This is in the shade Velvet, but all three of these were great. Like them a lot. I knew that going into this. So we're gonna pick out new ones, rotate these out, and maybe pick some that aren't so sheer because I really kind of stuck to just like clear lip glosses this round and maybe pick at least one opaque one. But that is gonna wrap up everything that I've been using for the last month or so. Now let's pan over and pick out new products to use for this next round. Okay, first drawer here is primer. Since I'm already gonna roll over the more glowy primer, the Charlotte Tilbury, I'm just gonna look for like more of a pore blurring one. And I think I'm gonna go with this one. This is the YSL Touche Clot Primer. It's kind of pore blurring. I have this little mini here. And then I have the full size here that I kind of just refill it from when I finish this, just so I can travel with it if I need to. But this is the primer that I'm gonna be using now. Excuse my dog. Let's move on to foundation. I have a few drawers of foundation, but I kind of had an idea of which one I wanted to pull. 
and I definitely want to pull this one. This is the Lancome Tinty Dole Ultra Wear. This is a classic one. However, this one's just really light for me. So if I'm going to wear it, it's going to be winter time. So I'm going to pull that one out. And then I kind of also want to do this one. This is the Guerlain L'Essentiel. So I think these will be the two foundations we do for this month. Let's go on to concealer. Moving on to concealers. I'm going to swap out my Benefit for my Becca. And then I'm not really sure what concealer I want to pull because I want to pull one I haven't used in a while. Um, let's just go, this one's looking a little empty. So let's go with this ColourPop one. This is in the shade Light 10. So hopefully you can get some good use out of it. Hopefully it's not expired, I'll have to check that. But this is the concealer we're gonna use. Next up is powder. So I'm gonna pull a pressed and a loose. I think it's just time that I pull this one. This is the Lancome Absolute Powder. I talked about this in my declutter a few times and I was kind of on the fence. I said I just needed to try it. So it is that time we are gonna try it. And then I'm also gonna pull in this Guerlain. This is the Terracotta Nude. It's like a universal, supposed to be universal pressed powder. It looks dark in the pan, but it's actually very pretty on. I like this a lot, so gonna get some more usage out of this. Looking at complexion, um, again, just trying to think of like what I haven't used in a while. I do really like this bronzer. This is the L'Oreal Lumi bronzer. So let's pull this one and I, don't know what cream I want. I don't have too many creams. Let's just go with this KKW one. This doesn't have a lot of product in it. Maybe I can finish it up. Here's hoping. Doubtful, but I'm going to give it a shot. See if I can get this just out of here. On to blush. Um, I do know what I want to pull for this one. It's going to be these two because I told myself I was going to do them last month and then I forgot when it came time to actually pull them. So these are the Bare Mineral Bounce and Blur. I have Coral Cloud and Blurred Buff. So I think even though these are kind of oppressed, they're kind of creamy. So it's gonna count as cream and powdered blush. So there we have blush. Let's pick out a highlight. And for highlight, I don't think I'm gonna pull a cream. I think that I'll go for this one. This I got during holiday a while ago. This is a Stila. This is the Starlight Star Bright. So this has three of those putty highlighters in them. All three are pretty. Kind of gives me like a little bit of range to play with. So we'll use this for highlight. I haven't used this in quite some time. And a little bit out of order, but we're gonna do lips next because that's my drawer underneath this. I'm only gonna pull three again, and this one all the way back here that you can't see. I don't think I've pulled this into a Shop My Stash. This is the Flower Beauty lipstick in sheer Snapdragon. So this will be a little bit sheer, kind of my preference, but a little bit more opaque than the ones we pulled last time. And then I do want to pull two more. So I think I'm going to pull these two Buxoms because I also haven't reached for these in a while. I have the shade Dolly and Mudslide. So let's give these some love. Again, kind of like more of a sheer formula, but that's just been what I've been reaching for. So I want to use things that I actually want to wear, not things that I don't. So these are going to be my three lipsticks. I want to get more use out of my single shadows here. So I'm just gonna pull one and it's gonna be the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize. I have the shade Oyster Pearl. This I think used to be Marie Antoinette. I'm not sure, I know she renamed them, but this is the single we're gonna pull. And then real quick, this is the Brow Gel. This is the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. I've never tried this, we're gonna give it a shot, but that is gonna replace my Kosas. 
And then let's pick out an eyeshadow palette. Last up is eyeshadow palette. I'm gonna try and pull this out a little bit more so you can see it. I have all my Natasha Denona here. I recently did a ranking on this, but I feel like I've tried a lot of these palettes out. So I kind of want to do this one. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam. I'll kind of push that so it doesn't fall. But here's what it looks like. I haven't given this as much love as I wanted to. So it's a great neutral palette. I think while I'm testing out a lot of holiday makeup, this will be great to reach into as a complimentary palette if I need to or just to use. So let's go with this one. I can always use it with the Charlotte Tilbury as well. And I think that's all of the products. Let's do a quick wrap up of everything I pulled. And here we are. Here are all the products that I'll be focusing on for the next month or so. That excludes things I do first impressions on, just other videos of that nature. So these are just things I want to use that are in my collection, gather more thoughts, see if they're gonna stay or if they're gonna go. But that is gonna wrap up this video. Give it a thumbs up again if you like these kinds of videos. And I will see you all in my next one. Bye everyone.